The store opened up in the middle of 2006, and uh, the purpose is just to provide a uh, record store for Tulsa that specializes in underground and independent music. At the time, there was no uh, record store, and also to provide a place for local bands to sell their music, as well as DJs to come in and buy new vinyl. Um, and basically be a headquarters for the underground music scene. You know, I didn't want to own like a pure, pure out venue, but I wanted to, but I like to throw parties and I like people to come in and have a good time and connect with the store in a way that you're not gonna, you're gonna feel like you go there because it's like a clubhouse or it's your fun place to go or that, you know, it gives, it gives the people that come in sort of a sense of ownership of the store because this is the place where they go and see their bands and this is the place, or if they're in the band, this is the place where we play all the time and, and uh, try to create a good environment for that. The business uh, grew to a point to where there were enough projects that I couldn't take care of it all at once, but at the same time I couldn't justify hiring somebody. So I, I um, you know, sort of posted something on MySpace to my customers about, you know, I could use some volunteer help but not knowing if anybody would re respond and I, I got a really good response out of it, actually more than I could use. So I um, got a few people in and, and I do have uh, several regular volunteers that come in on a weekly basis and help out for a few hours and, and uh, you know, I just have them take, take care of some of the projects that I need done, but there may be more urgent things that I need to take care of, such as bookkeeping, bill payment, reorders, day-to-day uh, -day operations um, that fill up and don't always allow me to take care of some of the, you know, side projects such as hanging posters or, or promoting things or creating advertisement or whatever. Realize that if you're seeing something on here and it says it's you know, somebody put a price of fifty dollars. That doesn't mean actually somebody will pay fifty dollars right. for it. But it may give you kind of an idea if you if you don't see it on eBay, you can come over here and look for it. And if there's only one copy and it says fifty dollars, then it may be worth thirty dollars, or I may be able to sell for thirty. Or you can always set that stuff aside and kind of ask me what I think. When I first told people I was doing this, they told me I was crazy. Uh, they said that that why would you volunteer for a business and I kind of explained my reasons and I work here basically because I have a passion for music and I believe in small businesses and um, Bart's business here is uh, just a little tiny record store and he's he's up against a lot of competition from your larger re retailers and as far as the internet and uh, I just live a couple blocks down the street and this is home so instead of giving my money to to some company that has its headquarters halfway across the nation, I'm going to keep it right here. So that's uh, something I definitely strongly believe in. I, I think a lot of people would love to work in a record store. Um, it's probably the best job one could ever have. It really is. And uh, like I said, I don't I don't see it as being a job, I see it as just coming in, hanging out, and uh, I don't feel the need to get paid, really. <laughs> I mean, if I got paid here, that, that would be, uh, it'd be too much, I think. <laughs> when HodgePodge Books was open, I know that they had volunteers, and the other record stores, they were short-lived, but Seasick and uh, $100 Taco, which was also a venue, or primarily a venue, and they took um, took volunteers and and I think that uh, for for the exact same reason it's just the it, they're involved in the scene and they're important enough to the scene in such a way that uh, people who care about it are willing to you know give give up a little bit of their time it would be hard for me to think that if I opened a uh, a mechanic shop or something that that I would get volunteers but who knows maybe if I did custom hot rods you know and then hot rod enthusiasts might come in and and help me out, you know, on a Saturday or something.
hodgepodge existed from October 2004 till about October 2005, um, give or take a few months on either end of that for preparing and dismantling the creation. And I wanted it to, um, I wanted to create something in Tulsa that could support independently published books and zines. And I, there just wasn't really an outlet for that, for such a low budget market where you weren't going to be making a huge profit or a profit at all. And I just wanted to be able to um, give those people and the people who are into that a place to go. There wouldn't have been um, a way to have zines and be selling zines and books in Tulsa for a profit and be able to pay everyone and be able to pay myself like it was never it wouldn't have been able to exist without volunteers like everyone that was involved was involved because they believed in having a place like hodgepodge around and we're going to do that whether they got paid or not it's hard because then if if, if you're not paying people um they have a tendency to flake out if they're not feeling as passionate about it on a certain day, they might forgo showing up to their volunteering shift in lieu of sleeping or you know any other fun activity they might come up with on that particular day. Whereas if at a job, they're having they have that monetary incentive, and if that's what they need to get out of bed, then I can't offer that or you know. So that's, that's the problem with having volunteers as your sole workforce, is they have to be dedicated. And if money is what dedicates them to performing a task, then it's kind of a lost cause. Really, I hope that um, I won't need the volunteers after a while. Uh, honestly, if if two or three years from now, if, I, if I'm not doing enough business to actually hire help, then it's, you know, honestly just not that good of a business venture. Um, but I do, but the business is growing and I do see it get to a point to where I will be able to hire, you know, two or three people to help during the week and then I'll be able to get these projects done through them and, and through myself. We're available if you want the paper. <laughs> we have a volunteer! <laughs> Yay!